Hello everyone. Today we'll uh, discuss about friction. So what is friction? When a body moves or tends to move over another body, a force opposing the motion develops at the contact surface. So this force which opposes the movement or the tendency of movement is called frictional force or simply friction. Or friction can also be defined as when a body slides upon another body, the property due to which the motion of one which is relative to the another is regarded as friction. Now consider this body which is resting over a contact surface. Now what is happening is this body is exerting some force on this contact surface. Now due to this force, the or when a force which is equal to P is applied on this body it creates or frictional force develops in the opposite direction which is indicated by F. Now this frictional force has a remarkable property of adjusting itself in magnitude to the force producing or tending to produce the motion so that motion is prevented. However, there is a limit beyond which the magnitude of this force increases. If the applied force is more than this limit, there will be movement of one body over another. Now let us look into types of friction. Now friction is basically divided into static friction and dynamic friction. Now first let us see what is static friction. Now static friction is the friction acting on the body when the body is at state of rest or friction which exists before the body tends to move on the surface. Now the magnitude of static friction is equal to the applied force. It varies from zero to maximum while the movement ensures. Now consider this block of weight W and it is being subjected to the weights which is represented here through a spring balance. Alright, now this block is resisting on a horizontal plane surface. The string is attached to one side of the block as shown in this figure. The other end of the string is connected to spring balance. Now gradually increase the magnitude of external force that is weights. So initially the body will not move. I mean this body will not move in this direction that is P. So when the weight is gradually increased, now this weight is gradually increased and this block will start to move. Now what is happening here is initially whatever the weights you are putting here is being overcome by friction. Now when this friction, now this force is greater than the frictional force, when that case happens, the body will start to move in the direction of force P. This is because there acts a force on the block which opposes the motion or movement of the block. The nature of this opposing force is called friction which always will be in the opposite direction of the movement of the body. Now this friction depends on many factors. The major cause for friction is the microscopic roughness of the contact surface. You can say that there is no surface which is perfectly smooth. Now let us come back to dynamic friction. So in dynamic friction can be classified into two types that is sliding friction and rolling friction. Sliding friction acts on those bodies which slides over each other. For example, the friction between piston and cylinders which the side slides upon each other. In this case, the motion of piston in cylinder is sliding and there is a surface contact between piston and cylinder. Or the static friction is a resisting force which opposes the sliding motion of the body over the surface. The force acts in the opposite direction to the motion of the body. If you consider a block of weight W here. Now this is the direction in which the block will tend to move and whereas the frictional force will be opposing the movement of the body in the opposite direction. Now the other type of dynamic friction is rolling friction. Rolling friction acts on those bodies which have point contact with each other. For example, the motion of wheel on railway track is an example for a rolling motion and the friction between the wheel and railway track is 
nothing but the rolling friction it can also be defined as the friction between two bodies when a body rolls over a plane as shown in this figure if you consider a roller which is uh, which is on a contact surface there will be a normal reaction here r if the body is moving in this direction and the weight of the body is w and to prevent this motion of the body in in this direction there will be frictional force which is developed in the opposite direction also depending on the nature of contact surface friction can also be classified into dry friction and fluid friction dry friction if the surface between the two bodies are dry then the friction between the bodies are uh, is referred to as dry friction fluid friction the contact uh, force between the fluid layer or between solid and fluid is termed as fluid friction now let us move on to next concept which is nothing but limiting friction now limiting friction can be defined as the maximum friction produced at the contact surface between two bodies before the movement of the body is happening is known as limiting friction now consider this block which is resting on a rough horizontal surface let w b the weight of the block let the block be subjected to a horizontal force p when this applied force is sufficiently small the block will remain in this position or remain or it will remain in equilibrium if the force p con continues in this direction and the magnitude is increasing then what will happen is there will be a maximum value beyond which the frictional force will not resist this motion and there and there exerts a force known as frictional force which is limiting this movement right this is f right so now suppose if this frictional force f continues to oppose p with longer magnitude but attains a maximum value called fm right beyond which the block starts sliding or it will start to move this maximum resistance offered by the body is called limiting friction now let us concentrate on the next concept known as normal reaction now to understand this we'll uh, look at this diagram once so let us consider a body a which is having a weight w and it rests over another contact surface b a force p acting on the body which slides the body on the surface b as shown in this figure now body a this body a presses the surface b downward equal to the weight of the body a correct in reaction surface b there will be an upward reaction by to this body and which will be in opposite direction to this weight of the body and it is known as normal reaction r okay so this upward force which is which is which will be in the same magnitude but opposite in direction is known as normal reaction and it is indicated usually by letter r or n now let us look into the next concept which is coefficient of friction this is represented by mu okay so coefficient of friction is defined as the ratio of limiting force of friction f to the normal reaction r between the two bodies so it is denoted by mu all right so if you represent that mu is equal to the ratio of limiting force of friction to normal reaction limiting force of friction is represented by f where normal reaction is represented by r so we can say that mu is equal to f by r all right or also f is equal to mu r this is one of the important relations which you have to remember now the next concept which we will be looking is angle of friction all right so angle of friction is defined as the angle made by the resultant of normal reaction r and the limiting force of friction f 
with the normal reaction R. It is noted by phi. The following figure shows a solid body resting on a rough horizontal plane. Let us understand angle of friction with the help of this figure. Now again angle of friction is defined as the angle made by the resultant. All right angle made by the resultant with the normal reaction R. Now which is this resultant? This resultant comes from this normal reaction R and the limiting friction F. So if I if you want to define it again so here it is angle of friction is defined as the angle made by the resultant of normal reaction R and the limiting force, force of friction F with the normal reaction that is important that is this phi is with respect to the normal reaction and not the horizontal force of friction that is important so this angle of friction is represented by phi now if you call this as the resultant that is S as the resultant of normal reaction and the limiting force of friction then we can complete this in the form of triangle by resolution of forces so this will become F so from this triangle we can say that tan phi is equal to F by R right so we also know that F is equal to mu R correct so let's replace that mu r divided by r so r gets cancelled so from this figure we can say that tan phi is equal to mu where mu is the coefficient of friction thus we can say that the tangent of angle of friction is equal to coefficient of friction so this is also one of the important relation which you have to remember now let us understand the next concept in friction which is important known as cone of friction. Now this is an imaginary inverted cone with an angle equal to the angle of friction. Now consider a body of weight W resting on a horizontal surface as shown in this figure. So let P be the force, this P be the force required to just move the body such that the frictional resistance develops to a limiting value. Let S be the resultant of a normal reaction R and the frictional force F and phi be the angle between R and S. This phi be the angle between R and S. Now if the direction of P is changed in the opposite direction and the F will also will be acting in the opposite direction correct so in the similar way if p is rotated if this p is rotated through 360 degree it it implies that the f is also rotated to 360 degrees and in turn the resultant s is also rotated through 360 degrees and hence it generates an imaginary cone called cone of friction the conical path traced by the resultant when force p is applied in all the directions covering an angle of 360 degree is known as cone of friction. Now let us move on to next topic called angle of repose. So in order to in order to understand this angle of repose you need to understand how the forces will act on a body which is on an inclined surface like this and what are the components of the forces acting on the body. Now as we since we know that the weight of the body will act always perpendicular right. So this irrespective of the contact surface the weight of the body will be acting perpendicularly downward. So we can say that this is the weight W that is perpendicularly downwards correct. Now the reaction depends on the nature of contact surface right. So this is the contact surface so the reaction will be perpendicular to this correct. So reaction will be acting perpendicular to the contact surface so, so this is R right. Now because there is no other forces acting on this body this body will tend to move in the downward direction due to gravitational force. To prevent this force the frictional force will be acting in this direction that is up the plane isn't it. So this is frictional force. So let us draw some 
imaginary lines so this line represents the plane right and this is the horizontal surface correct so this is in the direction of the plane and this is the horizontal surface now let's call this as angle alpha and we know that we have to resolve this w along the plane and perpendicular to the plane that is this force w will have two components right one is perpendicular to the plane so this is the direction of the plane so perpendicular to that will be one plane and along the plane so this will be along the plane so this w will have two components one is along the plane and the other is perpendicular to the plane so if this is alpha this component of the force will be w cos alpha and this component of w will be w sin alpha right so if this is alpha because this is 90 this angle will be 90 minus alpha right sorry this angle alpha comes from this inclination so if the inclination of this surface is alpha so this will be equal to alpha if this is alpha this will become 90 minus alpha if this is 90 minus alpha this will again become alpha so from this you will resolve the components of the force w as w cos alpha and w sin alpha please make a note of it now coming back to angle of repose so angle of repose theta or in this case we have called it as alpha correct right so alpha is the angle of inclination of this surface now further if we resolve the forces along the plane that is if we resolve the forces in the direction of the plane right so which are the forces we have w sin alpha acting downwards and f acting up the plane right so if you resolve we can say that w sin alpha is equal to f now call that as equation one now if we resolve the forces normal to the plane so which are the forces normal to the plane so normal to the plane means you have to consider this plane and look at the forces which are normal to this right so which are the forces now we have w cos alpha and we have r which both of which are acting in opposite direction so w cos alpha is equal to r now let us divide equations one and 2 so we will get w sin alpha divided by w cos alpha is equal to f by r or we can say that tan alpha sin by cos is tan so tan alpha is equal to f by r but we know that tan phi is also equal to f by r where this phi is equal to angle of friction correct so from the equations 3 and 4 we can say that tan alpha is equal to tan phi or simply alpha is equal to phi where alpha is our angle of repose and phi is our angle of friction correct so we can say that angle of repose is equal to angle of friction now uh, these are some of the important concepts which uh, we have to understand in order to solve uh, problems on friction so in the next lecture i will be solving uh, some problems on friction and we will understand it together. Thank you.